If you've been following the channel lately, you've seen and heard that I've been enjoying a lot of the new Airfix kits. I built a number of their newer 170 second scale releases, and they have all been great little kits. I recently picked up this 148 P51 Mustang and thought I'd see if the same carried over into their 148th scale line. Bottom line up front, it certainly does. It's another great kit. Here are some pics of the completed model, and when it comes to modeling value, this one is off the charts. Welcome back to Flying S Models. I was attracted to this kit by the excellent box art, and using the 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby meant that the price was right too. I was out the door for under 20 bucks. The box art is really attractive and highlights the marking options available inside. Let's take a quick scan of the kit components before we get rolling on this full build video. The instruction sheet is well laid out and has some nice illustrations. It provides some building guidance and they do a good job of highlighting the various options that are available within the kit. The cockpit is well detailed and I like the separate sidewalls. The wheel well engineering is far more accurate than the older Tamiya kit. The kit offers the option for raised or drop flaps, as well as raised or lowered landing gear. As with Airfix's other kits, they do a really nice job of providing separate pieces for the retracted landing gear that should make for a better finish if you go that route. This kit has the bazooka tubes, which is a really cool feature. It also includes two different styles of drop tank options. The engineering of the windscreen and canopy are really nice as well. We'll see how those fit as we progress through the build. There are markings for two different planes that are both really colorful. Airfix also provides a separate full stencil layout guide. The decal sheet looks especially nice, and if they perform like the others I've used recently, they will go down really well. The clear parts look excellent, and there are options for different windscreen and canopies. They're all really thin and very clear. The plastic on these kits is a little soft for my taste, and that has its pros and cons. The surface detail is really nice though, with fine engraved panel line and rivet detail. The kit includes diamond and radial tread tires, and each has a small flat spot to represent a weighted aircraft. The kit does a good job of representing the seat harnesses and belts, and the seat back cushion looks interesting. I don't believe the diamond pattern is actually accurate, but it does provide some visual interest, I guess. The bazooka tubes look really cool and make for a unique model. I started by drilling out the requisite holes in the lower wing for those bazooka tubes and drop tanks. I used my micro drill for this. You can find a link to that, along with all of the other products used in the build, in the video description below. I wanted to see how the wheel well box would look in the lower wing, so I glued the rear closeout piece that represents the main spar to the wheel well, and then the completed box to the lower wing piece using Tamiya Fine cement. The fit here is really good, and the overall look of the wheel bay is far more accurate than some of the older Mustang kits. The top wing pieces were then glued to the lower wing, again using Tamiya cement. Make sure that before you glue the right top half on, you insert the clear piece to the lower wing that represents the identification lights. The completed wing looks the part, and I really like that Airfix included separate pieces for the machine gun covers. This eliminates the need to sand a seam between each of the gun barrels that was always challenging on the Tamiya kit. Moving over to the cockpit, I started with my usual approach of spraying a coat of flat black on all of the parts. This serves as a black base that helps to provide more depth and contrast in the cockpit parts when I start laying down the interior green. For that interior green color, I like to mix up a mixture of 50-50 Tamiya Flat Green and Yellow Zinc Chromate. I mix it with about a 1 to 1 ratio of paint to thinner 
and spray light coats over the cockpit parts. I didn't spray the cockpit floor as this was wood in the real plane, so we'll create that effect after I get the interior green down. I focus the green on the center and high spots and allow some of the dark to show through in the recessed or lower areas. To achieve the wood effect on the cockpit floor, I first sprayed a coat of dark yellow, avoiding those areas that were already painted green. To achieve even more depth and contrast in the cockpit parts, I mixed up an oil wash using a little mineral spirits and some raw umber mixed with a touch of lamp black. This thin mixture was applied to the parts, allowing it to run into all of the recesses. I glued the seat pan to the seat back. The kit has a pretty neat feature in that the lap belts are molded with the seat pan support bars and it helps to create more raised definition for those belts. The seat was glued to the rear cockpit bulkhead before I continued on with the next steps in the cockpit painting process. The next step was to lighten my cockpit color using a little more of that yellow zinc chromate and then spray a light coat on the high spots and avoid the recessed areas that had received the oil wash. Now the wheelbase and some of the other interior parts were actually painted a yellow zinc chromate versus the interior green, so I came back with a straight mixture of yellow zinc chromate and sprayed it over those particular parts. To create even more contrast in those areas, I came back in with a really thin coat of Tamiya flat yellow and sprayed it in the center areas of each of those pieces. Now it was time to start adding a little more weathering effects to the parts that had just been sprayed. To achieve these effects, I used white spirits and oil paints straight from the tube. I first applied a coat of white spirits to each of the parts using a clean brush. With a fine tip brush, I start with a little raw umber and dab it into the recessed areas on each of the parts. I work one part at a time, applying and then blending and removing the oil paint into and from the flat acrylic painted areas. To blend and remove the oil paints, I simply use a clean brush and clean white spirits and remove as much or as little as I like to get the overall effect that I'm after. I now apply a few small drops of yellow ochre to the center of the various parts and pieces. This is also blended in and removed until I'm happy with the overall effect. You can see how it starts to add a whole new dimension to the finish. Finally, I add a few small dots of white to some of the raised areas to accentuate some highlights and wear that would occur in those areas. These are blended and removed in the same way as the other colors. To create the wood floor effect, I used a stiff bristle brush to apply a thin mixture of Vallejo Brown over the dark yellow I had laid down. I kind of go with the grain here to start to create a little wood grain effect. To add even more wood graining, I used a fine tipped brush and a little Vallejo Chocolate Brown to create some grain streaking. You can see the overall look that is achieved with this technique. In a similar way, I painted the seat cushion using various shades of Vallejo acrylics, picking out each of the raised sections on the cushion and the shoulder harnesses and lap belts. I added the control stick and then painted it and the fuel tank using Vallejo flat black. I mixed a little white to lighten that up and then painted some of the high spots and edges on the stick and tank using a fine tip brush. I added the seat to the main cockpit floor and glued it in place. Here is a look at the completed main cockpit parts with all of the weathering and detail painting steps complete. 
Before detail painting the cockpit sidewalls, I first glued the pieces to the right and left fuselage halves. I checked the fit of the main cockpit piece with the fuselage halves and confirmed a very good fit with the newly installed cockpit sidewalls. To add detail to each of the sidewalls, I first painted the various console boxes and switches with Vallejo Flat Black using a fine tip brush. I followed that up by painting other details using Vallejo Gray, Red, and White. Here's what it looked like at this stage of the game. The kit includes a nice decal for the instrument panel, but I chose to hand paint the details. To represent the instrument bezels, I mixed up a little 5-minute epoxy and using a toothpick added a drop of it to each individual gauge. You can see that the epoxy adds just a little extra realism by simulating a nice shiny glass bezel. Airfix provides some nice decals for the various cockpit placards, so using a little AK decal setting solution, I applied each one individually to the appropriate locations. They add a little extra something to the cockpit that really helps to bring it to life. While the decals set up, and before I could install everything into the fuselage halves, I had to paint and install the radiator assembly. I used Tamiya flat aluminum to paint the radiator screens, and while I had that color loaded up, I also used it to paint the landing gear and wheel parts. I installed the screens into the radiator housing and then glued the housing halves together. The intake screen was installed to close out the entire radiator housing assembly. The fit of all the components is excellent. The radiator assembly was then installed to the main cockpit section. Next, the tail wheel base sides are installed onto the cockpit section. I don't usually like installing the landing gear components this early in the build, but I could tell that it was going to be required for this build. I decided to hold off weathering the tail wheel gear until later in the painting process. Here's a look at the entire subassembly before I installed it in the fuselage halves and closed the fuselage up. Before closing up the fuselage, I added the vertical stabilizer pieces to each of the halves. The fit of the cockpit subassembly into the fuselage halves is excellent. I really like the Airfix engineering here. The fit is so tight that you probably could get away without adding any glue, but I won't risk it. With the cockpit subassembly installed on the right fuselage halves, I could now add the left fuselage half and seal everything up. I installed the upper cow cover to the newly completed fuselage. The wing can now be installed to the fuselage. The overall fit here, once again, is excellent. Now I installed the machine gun pieces to the wing section. The fit here was decent, but not perfect. On the left wing, I did have to fill in a small gap with a little bit of evergreen strip styrene. The lower cow cover and lower wing leading edge piece was installed. Again, Airfix is to be congratulated on the good fit of these parts. The ailerons are provided as separate pieces, so I added those at this point. After those are installed, I add the drop flaps to both the right and left wings. Next, I install both the right and left horizontal stabilizers. Again, fit here is excellent and no filler was required. I now add the rudder to the vertical stabilizer. The elevators are provided as separate pieces, so I add those next. I assembled the prop shaft assembly and glued it in place along with the chin intake. The prop shaft is a little bit wobbly inside of the assembly, so I just glued it in place since I position my props and don't really care if they spin. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos, you've seen that I don't always prime my models. 
But when laying down a natural metal finish, it's important to make sure that the surface is free of any blemishes so a coat of Tamiya's fine surface primer does the trick. I masked off all of the open areas, sprayed the entire model, and then polished all the surfaces with a 3200 grit sanding cloth. Now I was ready to start laying down some paint. For the natural metal finishes, I find AK's Extreme Metal range to be really user-friendly and durable. It's a lacquer-based acrylic and you don't have to apply a black gloss coat under it unless you're wanting a highly polished chrome look. I build it up in layers, spraying light coats on the entire model surface. You can see that the aluminum finish is really fine and shiny. Now it's time to apply the Olive Drop Anti-Glare Panel. I mask that off with Tamiya tape and sprayed it with a coat of Tamiya Olive Drop. To add a little variation to that tone, I added a couple drops of Tamiya Deck Tan and then sprayed a thin layer inside of the various panels. I removed the tape to reveal the sharp line of the anti-glare panel against the natural metal finish. To add a little more variation to the natural metal finish, I masked off a few individual panels and sprayed those with AK's Dark Aluminum. Those included areas around the engine exhaust, machine guns, and gun and ammunition access panels. To add a little initial weathering to the finish, I first applied a light coat of acrylic semi-gloss. I then came back in and used oil paints applied over a coat of white spirits in the same way I had done in the cockpit. You can see a more detailed illustration of this technique in the weathering with oils video I have loaded up here on the channel. I add the oil weathering only around those areas that would have seen more wear or accumulated more grime. I used raw umber and a little bit of white inside of a few select panels just to alter the tone of the natural metal finish a bit. Instead of using pure white, on the anti-glare panel, I mixed up a light olive green color and applied it to create some highlights around access screws and hatches. Here you can see the difference between the initial weathering effects that I've applied to the left side versus the right side that hasn't been done quite yet. And now here's a look at the Mustang with all of the initial oil weathering effects applied. Now it's time to start applying some of the specific markings for the little Indian. The black theater stripes are supplied as decals, but I chose to mask and airbrush those using Tamiya Flat Black. After I applied the flat black, I came back with a thin mix of NATO black and sprayed that inside of the individual panels for a little variation. I removed the tape to show the crisp demarcation lines and the better results that are achieved using paint instead of decals. The leading edges of the flaps were natural metal, so I had to fix that overspray that I had applied while adding the theater bands. In preparation for adding the panel line wash and decals, I airbrushed a light coat of AK's Real Gauzy over the entire model surface. I like to use AK's panel liner for winter camouflage. It's dark but not pure black and has an oily green hue to it. I apply it over the panel lines and rivet details, wait for a few minutes, and then wipe it off with a clean paper towel.
there are a few areas like the radiator exhaust duct and wheelbase that will need to be sprayed or resprayed with yellow zinc chromate. I'll do that later. To apply the decals, I use AK's decal solution under and over each individual decal. The solution helps the decal settle down to the model surfaces better. With the decals down and set, I came back in and applied more of that AK panel liner to add a little weathering to each of the individual decals. Here's how things looked after all of the decals and panel line washes had been applied. To flatten that glossy anti-glare panel, I masked it off and applied a coat of AK's Ultra Matte Clear. Now I came back in and masked off the wheelbase and radiator exhaust areas and sprayed those in the same way I had done the other areas, starting with flat black and then building up layers of paint using yellow zinc chromate. I come back in and spray some of the high spots with a little flat yellow. I sprayed the prop and spinner flat black and then came back with some NATO black and sprayed the tip of the spinner. I used the same white spirits and oil paint technique to add a little weathering to the spinner and leading edges of the prop blades. I cut masks for the windscreen and canopy and sprayed those areas olive drab and black. After adding a little of the same weathering effects to those parts, I sealed them with a flat coat and removed the masks. I painted and installed the instrument combing and the gun sight to the windscreen. The fit here is really nice and makes for an easy assembly. The fit to the fuselage is also really nice and you can see that I'll need to fix the line for the anti-glare panel by masking off and spraying a little more aluminum to the lower area of the windscreen part. To add a little more detail to the wheelbase, I apply a little Vallejo yellow to the individual wing ribs and other components. I really like the engineering behind the main gear doors. They are assembled together separately and then inserted into the wheel bay. This makes alignment and installation a breeze. The landing gear and wheels were painted and installed. The fit here is not quite perfect, so make sure to check alignment of the landing gear and wheels. Also, the wheels are handed, so be careful to put them on to the correct strut. I masked and sprayed the prop tips with Tamiya Flat Yellow, applying a base coat of flat white first to make sure that the yellow covered well. The antenna wire ran through the canopy and attaches to the top of the seat back. To enable this, I had to drill a small hole using a micro drill and pin vise in the top of the canopy. I route easy line through the canopy and then attach it to the fin and the seat back before attaching the canopy in the open position. I installed all the final bits including the bazooka tubes, fuel tanks, and pedo to finish out this build. Here's a look at the finished model. Airfix is really producing some great kits these days. You can see that I'm starting to really make a habit of building their brand. It's hard to believe that you can get this kind of kit for under 20 bucks. With a little extra work, you can turn this Mustang into a real showpiece pretty much right out of the box. Once again, I appreciate you tuning back into the Flying S Models channel, and I hope you found this video informative and maybe even a little fun. Make sure to subscribe and click the notifications bell to keep up with my latest video updates. We'll see you next time.